Hi everyone, my name is Allie and welcome to my channel and we are doing a vlog because I am going to Disneyland tomorrow, technically. <laughs> but we are leaving today so I figured I would start the vlog here and start off with kind of a get ready with me. I have a coffee with me. I believe it's 8.40 and we're supposed to be leaving at like 10. So I definitely have enough time to get ready and I'm like not in a rush. But I just figured that I would get ready with you all and sorry about how messy the background is. I have been trying to pack and trying to figure out what I'm gonna wear for the past like two days. So um, I really don't know. And the problem is, is that I feel like every time I go to Disneyland, I wear the most heinous outfits. Like I, for some reason, cannot dress myself for Disneyland. Um, at least not anymore. I mean, actually, you know what? I feel like I haven't worn a cute outfit to Disneyland since I was in high school. <laughs> like since I went to grad night and I wore that really cute semi Disney bound of Minnie Mouse. It was so cute. I remember I got like everything in that outfit from Kmart. So that was like, that's how old it was. It was 2013. And I looked adorable. I looked so cute. I could probably put a picture up here. And I had like this cute little like black skirt and a really cute polka dotted t-shirt sort of thing. And it was adorable. I wore flats. So cute. And then I changed. I brought a, I brought like leggings and I bought a sweatshirt so cute it was adorable and like i totally like slayed that outfit but now i just i feel like i cannot make a cute disney outfit to save my life so it has been a huge struggle trying to figure out what to wear also i'm going with my family on this trip so that's a lot of fun and i didn't have to pay for any of it so thank god um <laughs> so i'm just gonna have a lot of fun i'm just gonna you know go with the flow do whatever they want to do and have fun. Also, I did my nails. I think they look really, really cute. Um, I never use this color. It's actually the Sally Hansen uh, plant-based vegan uh, nail polish, and it's in the color Crystal Blue. So that's what it looks like. It's really pretty on, and it dries so fast, which is so nice, because I have a top coat from LA Colors that takes forever to dry okay so we are gonna do just some like minimal makeup because we're not going to disneyland today we are going tomorrow and actually we're doing california adventure first so i'm gonna use this essence pretty natural hydrating foundation which i have been loving lately i just like kind of not rediscovered it but like i've had this foundation for a while and sometimes i'm just not into the sheer coverage of it because it is pretty sheer honestly um, it's not full coverage or even medium coverage. It's it's almost kind of like a um, tinted moisturizer in a way. Does anybody remember that tinted moisturizer that was like huge back in the day? And when I mean back in the day, like on beauty YouTube, I mean like way back, like when I was in high school. Um, I actually stopped kind of watching <laughs> beauty videos by like 2016. I was kind of over it. So I never got into like the... Um, really intense beauty gurus. I was more like Bethany Moda, Zoella, um, all of those people. Like those were my beauty gurus, <laughs> which probably makes so much sense as to who I am as a person. But <laughs> does anyone remember, what was it? Was it Laura Mercier? It must have been, it had to have been. But remember that tinted moisturizer that was huge. I'll put a picture of it up on the screen. But like everybody had it. I think I had it at one point like in a tiny bottle in like a travel size because that's all I could afford or that's all my mom could afford because I was like probably 15 or 16. That was a moment in time honestly. It really really was. It really truly truly was. Okay so I need to talk about the book I'm currently reading which is The Last Flower Bride, right? Is that what it's called? The Last something. Uh, by Roshni Chakshi and I am, as you guys know, this was actually one of the most anticipated books for me of 2023 um, and I would definitely consider it as being like in the top five of most anticipated books if I had to make a list and I was extremely disappointed, like so disappointed by this book. 
I just cannot express to you how bummed I am that I'm not enjoying this book. Like, it's okay. I think it's gotten a little bit better than the beginning. The beginning was just so heavy on the, sh the tell versus showing thing, you know? Um, it was telling us a lot. <laughs> and it was all very much just like rehashing things that we didn't get to see on page and that had happened in the past or that were happening now but told in a way that was like kept at like three arms length um which typically sometimes I don't mind I think if it's done well and it's done in a way that is still intriguing to the reader I think it can be like really successful I think a book that does that really well is um The Bear and the Nightingale I thought that that book despite the fact that it was a little bit distant in the narration and the way that the story was being told despite that I still felt like it was telling a compelling story like I still felt like brought into the narrative I still felt like I could um really take hold of that story but with the last tale of the flower bride that's what it is um but with the last tale of the flower bride I am just feeling like I cannot connect to the story. I can't connect to the characters. And there's one character in particular, she is kind of like, she is kind of a main character, but not really. She's more of just like one of the sec, I don't, I wouldn't call her secondary character. I don't know what I would call her. But um, there is a character who is kind of like this enigmatic, you know alluring sort of character within the main character's life she's like her like soulmate best friend sister um whatever and in the narration like we're kind of expected to find her alluring to find her enigmatic to find her attractive in a way and there's nothing to support that like it kind of reminds me of um selena in throne of glass especially in the first book where we're constantly told that she is an assassin but there's really nothing to support it in the text in like a way that like the reader's gonna believe it and that is definitely what is you know going on here with the last tale of the flower bride unfortunately is the author is kind of relying more on the reader to make those assumptions rather than giving us something to base them on which is kind of a bummer I don't feel like this is her strongest attempt at adult fantasy and personally I think that this book could have thrived so much more as YA like I think that it should have just been a YA book there's really not much in the story to make it into like to to justify it being adult fantasy <laughs> like there's really nothing and not that adult fantasy has to be like overtly sexual or gory or whatever but it's just it it really is following these girls as teenagers like the majority like the overwhelming majority of the book these girls are teenagers and I just and and like the content of it is not intense enough for it to be adult I think that there could have been like just like very small edits to make it into a YA book so as much as I love adult fantasy that kind of reads YA this is a little bit too far in a way for me like it's almost like it's just YA masquerading as adult instead of an adult fantasy that has the vibe of YA it's kind of flipped around it's more like YA that has the vibe of adult because <laughs> I feel like this could easily fit in with like Six of Crows or <clears throat> any of her other books god what are they called <sighs> Silver Serpents is the sequel and I can't remember the name of the first book but you know what I'm talking about I think you kind of understand what I'm saying but yeah I'm just I'm not loving this book which is so unfortunate I only have about an hour hour and a half left of the audiobook so I'm definitely gonna finish it and I wanted to finish it before reviewing it because it is technically an arc and it hasn't come out yet and I did want to give it my full 
attempt at enjoying this book. I didn't want to judge it too harshly because it is her first adult book and I do like to support these YA authors going into adult. Like I have read Ninth House, I have read um frick Book of Night. <laughs> Why did I blank on that name? That's so funny. But I do try to, you know, when I can support these iconic um YA authors who are very popular in their endeavors to becoming more adult authors which is awesome I think that that's great if that's your you know journey in life so I want to be supportive of that however I do still need the book to be good I do still need to enjoy uh the plot the characters etc and I think that this book unfortunately had so much potential so much you know great stuff to work with but it just was not working for me this has become a the last tale of the flower bride review which is fine because we're going to be splitting these vlogs up into three different vlogs anyway so i'm not too worried about time or anything um this can definitely just be kind of more of a reading vlog and i did want to update everybody on like what i've been reading because i have not vlogged in so long i feel so bad because i just like have not had been in the mood to vlog mainly i think you know what it's the same reason why i haven't really been in the mood oh, frick. it's the same reason why i haven't really been in the mood to read either and i'm blaming will and grace i have been watching will and grace kind of for the first time technically um at least as an adult at least as like somebody who's cognizant of the world around them instead of being a ch literal child kind of over watching i don't know what would you say over watching overlooking when my mom was watching will and grace when it was coming out um because she like her favorite show is will and grace like that is her favorite show and she loves watching it with me now and she's always like can you tell can you see why i love this show so much why it made me so happy at the time and i'm like yes because it's making me exponentially more happy <laughs> um i love will and grace it is pretty problematic i will say like it's not perfect but by god it's so much fun to watch because i mean like this was queer representation in the 90s <laughs> which is like still like to this day is just like not like can you imagine a queer show running for like eight or nine seasons today no no that's not gonna happen that's just not because it's just not possible anymore not with the way that our tv viewership is not with the way of netflix not with the way of the intense um expectations placed on queer representation it's just not gonna happen like will and grace was so messy it was it, it got a lot of things not quite right but i mean it took a lot of risks it did a lot of really cool things and there's so many moments in that show of like clarity there's this one scene where will is talking to a baby gay and he's kind of like this guy that he's taking under his wing kind of showing him the ropes and the guy is like oh i watched this gay movie and it sucked <laughs> And Will is like, yeah, we all know. It's just kind of a secret. Like, we don't really have a lot of gay movies. So we just pretend to like them because that's what you kind of have to do. <laughs> um, and it's, it's, that's true today, honestly. And that's so sad that we really haven't progressed all that much since the 90s, Will and Grace. <laughs> um, but I do love that show so much. And everybody is so freaking talented like so insanely talented you do not see these kind of actors today especially not in sitcoms or comedy or whatever like you just you're not gonna see those kind of actors they're so good and that's what I love about 90s television or like early 2000s television is that I'm sorry the acting is superior like <laughs> these people knew how to act at least for tv I feel like so too often 
the people who are acting today are either too dry or like too over the top in like such a cringe way um I don't know I just I love some good throwback 90s television it's so good but yeah we're almost done with my makeup which is nice that was pretty quick and fast I guess it was 20 minutes but <laughs> cut that in half and that's how long it usually takes me to do my makeup how does it look my eyelashes look pretty good though I think even if they don't curl all that much they still look pretty good <laughs> um so yeah there's my makeup I just need to do my hair and pick out my outfit for today it's mostly gonna be a like travel day so I don't think I really need to put too much effort into my look but yeah here is the finished product with my nails I love the color I think it's so pretty and yeah I'm just gonna get dressed and I will talk to you guys later here's the outfit got my coffee and I'm wearing my little mermaid ears really horrible lighting though <laughs> today is california adventure day so we are going to california adventure and my hair is a little messed up because i forgot to bring a brush a hairbrush i don't know why i forgot to bring that but here we are so i woke up early got a coffee i'm ready to go yeah. Jamal. we're here we're going to California Adventure today. Got through the security line and now we're here. <laughs> Yay! So excited. I don't know what we're gonna do first, but I'm ready to have a really fun day. So because for some reason I decided not to actually film myself talking a lot during this day at California Adventure, I figured I would do a little bit of a voiceover. So here we are in the beginning. I got to the park pretty early in the morning and we were just looking at a lot of merch and we saw a couple of characters. I didn't really feel like stopping for any of the characters today or at all during this trip, so I didn't do that. First ride of the day. So after we got off of Monsters Inc, we ended up getting this really good blue drink. It was delicious, it was alcoholic, bomb. I absolutely loved it. It was like blue curacao and pineapple, whatever. And then we ended up walking quickly through Avengers Campus. We didn't really stop or do anything there and also bypassed uh, Cars Land. And then we ended up going to get food. I got the quesadilla tacos. They were so good. And then my brother had to go get a piece of pizza because he is pretty picky. So um, then we just like went through a couple of rides. We decided to go on Incredicoaster because my brother now loves roller coasters so that was fun i haven't ridden that ride since they changed it got a little bit of a churro and then of course i had to get my first coffee of the day delicious and then we went over and did soren over the world or around the world what is it called anywhere i don't know and then we got some popcorn in this really cool bucket it's so cute and of course i could not come to california adventure without going on the little mermaid ride i love it i had my little mermaid ears on today and it was just so fitting i love this ride so so much and then my dad and i decided to go over to the grand californian i got a paloma to drink and then we also had this really amazing chorizo poutine And then I got my second Starbucks of the night. I got a hot chestnut praline latte. And then me and my brother went on Incredicoaster one more time. We're here and we're early. We actually got here a little too early because we got here at like 7.30. So we went to go get a coffee. And now it's almost eight o'clock and we can go in. Also, no ears today. Just going normal. We got inside. Here we are. Got my coffee. Here's our shadows. All we need to do is figure out what we're gonna do next. It's kind of cold, 
but I think that we got here early enough that we can just kind of do whatever we want, so. Here's Joe. So exciting! First look, walking along. Oh look, they're up there. It's not too packed yet. <laughs> we got here like the perfect time, honestly. It's perfect because I got to get my coffee before we even got inside, so. Got your map. Where's the map? In the butt. <laughs> First look at the castle. And like they have all the 100 year anniversary decorations up. There it is. First show of the day is Thunder Mountain. We're ready to go. I gotta chug this coffee real quick. Fantasyland first and we're gonna do Peter Pan because we just got off of Big Thunder Mountain. So we're headed over. We're actually doing Snow White first because you can see the line for Peter Pan. It's like 40 minutes. Okay, so now we are on our way to Star Tours and there's a castle behind me and I think that the line for Star Tours shouldn't be too busy at the moment so yeah super excited gotta try keeping up with him because dude he's running fast honestly for me Autopia is one of those rides that I don't typically want to go on but I actually had a really fun time on Autopia this time and I just drove around it's so funny because I don't have my license and then we went to Frontierland didn't really do anything there okay so we just got off of Autopia and Star Tours and now we're headed over to uh, Splash Mountain and we're going through Frontierland so I think I need to redo my hair thing because it's all falling out it's because of all the layers. We're in line for Haunted Mansion, but we just got off of Splash Mountain. And I don't know if you can tell, but I'm like soaked everywhere, like just all over. But thankfully I'm wearing black, so I don't think you can really tell. My hair did survive though, so we're looking good. We're still looking okay. I will show you guys the picture though. I have to, because it is hilarious. had to run all the way over to Space Mountain because it broke down and then it reopened and it's basically a walk-on. Your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside. Fun fact, the train ride, especially when it went through the Grand Canyon part, used to scare me so bad as a really little kid. Like I was so terrified of the dinosaurs. I thought they were real. I thought they were 100% real life dinosaurs. Right, right, right. So looking at the six months. It's on the 
Goodbye to Disneyland. We're on our way back. Okay, so you can't really see me, obviously, but we are headed out of Disneyland. Disneyland is right behind me, and we are going home at 7 o'clock, which is actually okay because we literally got here at 7.30 in the morning, and we made the most of our time, honestly. Like, we got to go on Rise of the Resistance, we got to go on Splash Mountain, all those rides, and so, I am really excited about that and really happy that we got to do all of those fun things and we had a great time and now we are headed back towards the buses and we're gonna go home and we had a really good day today so I think that we did everything right. Ooh, I 